Hello my little Willies. This is the second video, the second part of our tutorial Baby Kimono Knitting Pattern. You will find the link to the first part below this video in the description box. And remember that you will find the reading instructions on my website sowilly.net. There is a link for you also below this video on the description box. On video 1 we knitted the back the left front and the right front. Now we're going to knit the sleeves, we're going to join the pieces and finally we're going to knit the edge. The sleeves are really easy to knit, it's just a rectangle and we will be knitting first increases and then a straight part. So for the sleeves, smallest size, we're going to cast on 24 stitches. It's the same process we made for the other parts. So in broken rib stitch, which is knit one, purl two, one and two, that's the repeat. Knit one, purl two, one, two, we're going to need four rows, so keep repeating, knit one, purl two, to the end of the row. Ending with knit one, purl two. But the last one, only on this first row, I like to purl it through the back loop, so you don't get a huge stitch there. The second row is the same, knit one, purl two. Knit one, purl two, and repeat. Continue knitting until you have four rows for the ribbing. And now we will start the stocking knit section. First row, knit every stitch. to the end of the row. Second row, wrong side of the work, pull every stitch. to the end of the row. So on row 3 we're going to make two increases, one at the beginning, one at the end. To make the increases, knit 2, 1, 2, and now take the right leg of the V from the row below, the stitch from the row below, and put it onto the left hand needle and knit as a normal stitch, knit the following. We have increased one stitch and keep knitting until there are three stitches left. And repeat the process. Take the right leg of the V that you see from the row below, put it onto the left hand needle, knit this stitch and knit three. We have increased another one. So two increases made. The next row, wrong side of the work, is just a purling row. We just pull every stitch. You can also use another kind of increase if you like. I like this one because it's pretty discreet. 
great for a stocking at peace. So we have completed four rows. Now knit rows five and six, and we're going to increase again in row seven. Same process, knit two, pick the right leg of the V from the row below, and knit it, and knit every stitch until there are three stitches left. And repeat. Take the right leg of the stitch from the row below, put it on the left hand needle, knit it as a normal stitch and knit three. That was row seven. So keep repeating, knitting and stocking at stitch, and we are going to increase again in rows 11 and 15. Once all the increases are made, we are going to keep knitting until the sleeve measures 11.5 centimeters in total. No more increases will be made. Now facing the right side of the work, we're going to bind off. So knit one, knit the next, and pass the stitch over. Knit the next, and pass the stitch over. Knit the next, and pass the stitch over. And repeat. We should have 32 stitches in total. And continue repeating these two steps to the end of the row. Knit and pass the stitch over. Now cut the yarn, leaving a 10 centimeters or 4 inches tail, the double, sorry, because we can use this tail to join the sleeves. Now knit the second one and we can join the baby kimono. Now we have to block all the pieces, so I'm leaving you with the little video I made to show you how it's done. Before joining the pieces, we need to let them soak in, in water for a while and then remove the excess of water, squeezing them gently. Put them on a towel and flatten them. You can fix them with some pins and finally let them air dry. Now we have our five pieces locked and believe me, this will make your work much, much easier. So firstly, we're going to join the shoulders. So place both parts, the back and the front, one in front of the other, facing the right side of the work. Thread your tapestry needle and place the needle in the most exterior part of the front And again. And now put the needle below the V of one side and below the first V of the other side. And again, below the V on one side and below the V on the other side. And repeat to the end. When you get to the last stitch, the shoulders are joined and now we have to weave in the ends. So place the tapestry needle below these V's.
we need to try to take this tail far from the beginning so we can make a little knot after that and hide it so I like to split the yarn and make three little knots because they, they will be tiny repeat the process for the other shoulder now we are joining the sleeve to the back and the front always facing the right side of the work and you can put a pin just in the middle thread your tapestry needle and now we are going to make some kind of vertical seaming so on this side place the needle below the first bead that you see and on the sleeve you need to find these little bars between the last stitch and the next one here below the V and in the sleeve find the other bar below the V and here we just got to the end and now the process is the opposite here you need to find the little bar and on the sleeve you have to put the needle below the V stretch so you can see where the little bar is You can put your needle below two bars and below the V from the sleeve. But always check in that you have the same amount of fabric in the two sides. If taking two bars is too much, just take one to compensate. That's why I used the pin to show me where the center is. My little woolies, to be honest with you, I prefer to use circular needles and knit the sweaters in just one piece to avoid this process. But many of you tell me all the time that you don't like knitting in the round. So that's why I designed this sweater to be knit with straight needles. Okay, keep doing this until you get to the other side and now we can choose. We can join the sleeve or the side of the sweater. Let's do the sleeve first. The first thing we need to do is to join the armhole. And now we're going to do a vertical seam. So as before, when you join the armhole, you can do it twice. You have to stretch your knitting and look for the bars between the last stitch and the next on both sides. That's what I need all the stitches on each row, the first and the last, all the time. Because this creates these little bars and it's easier to join the pieces using the invisible seam method. So 
just be patient, stretch the kneading and find these bars. until you get to the other side. And now we have to weave in the ends. Again, take the yarn far away from the edge of the sleeve. You can pass it all the time through the right V, the right leg of the V, to hide it. And repeat the process that I teach to make the knot. Now thread your tapestry needle and we're going to join the sides of the cardigan. This is again a vertical seam on both sides. I like to pin just to check you know that I don't have more fabric on one side than in the other one and again keep looking for the little bars stretching the, the, the fabric is really useful to see what you're doing so two bars from one side two bars from the other side until you get to the end Put some music on, relax, and just do it, being very patient. I shared some pictures on Instagram. So you can see that it really is invisible seams. Once that all the pieces are joined, we are going to knit the edge. So facing the right side of the kimono and starting on the corner of the right front, the most exterior spot of the ribbing, pick up and knit three every four stitches. So knit three, placing the needle below the V's. Pick up and knit three and then skip the fourth and start again. Knit three, one, two, three and skip the following one and repeat pick up and knit one two and skip the next. You have to, important, you have to place the needle below this nice column of V's, the diagonal column of V's that we made as a result of the decreases. And repeat the process until the neckline at the back. This is the best formula to get a nice edge. Now we are getting close to the back and keep repeating pick up and knit three and skip the next 
when we get to the back. I think this is the last one. Yeah. We have to place the needle below the V. So we are picking up and knitting one stitch per every stitch of the back. You will see the columns and every stitch we pick up and knit corresponds to one of these columns of Vs. When you get to the other side, we have to start again picking up and knitting three every four stitches. Sometimes difficult. So one, two, three, and skip the next until you get to the end the other corner of the ribbon on the left front turn the work and we're going to knit in broken rib stitch knit one Purl two and repeat. Knit one, purl two. Knit one, purl two. Keep repeating to the other side. Purl two. I have one stitch extra, so I'm just going to knit it in every row. So this row starts for me with knit one, which is the extra stitch. And now I can repeat knit one, purl two. knit one, purl two, to the end of the row. We are going to knit four rows in this broken rib stitch. And when you get to the fifth row, we are going to bind off working each stitch as it presents. So when you see a V, you knit and pass the stitch over. When you see a purl, you purl and pass the stitch over. Purl and pass the stitch over. Knit and pass the stitch over. It's really important here that you bind off loosely. If you tied the stitches too much, the edge is going to shrink and it won't look good. So you could use, just to bind off, a needle one size 
larger. If you tend to tide your stitches. And when you get to the other side, repeat the process and hide. This tail and every other tail that's left, just as before. Take the yarn far away from the edge. Always using the column of these, just place the needle below one of the legs of each stitch and run away from the corner. You can also place the, the needle below the bumps, the purl stitches. That's up to you. It's also nice to change directions. So everything will be more secure. And then you can repeat the process. Split the yarn and make the little three knots and hide them below one of these bumps of a purl stitch. So, sew up the three little buttons and your baby kimono is finished. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. There are many projects to come. Hugs and happy knitting.